Let's go! TJ Finley, oh my goodness, the transfer rumors are heating up. And today I'm going to give you how I think you should feel about his next destination. But I want to start this video off with something special. We're on the road today. This is, uh, my grandfather's a World War II veteran. And uh, they gave this to him back in 03. And he passed away uh, a few years after he was given that. But that is one of my favorite items. I'm finally getting to be back in New Roads, Louisiana. Uh, getting to see family, getting to hang out. And uh, this is actually uh, the hometown of Matthew Langlois. This is where he was from, Point Capi uh, Parish. And uh, that's why I like Matthew Langlois so much, because I grew up here. And, um, and it's weird, uh, my, my grandparents' house used to be a, juke, uh, a, a dive bar, uh, but they turned this into uh, their home, I think 40 or 50 years ago or something like that. But anyway, um, no edits in this video. It's just me hanging out with you on a porch in New Roads, Louisiana, talking about TJ Finley. And um, and look, I know Auburn seems to be the sexy destination for him. And that seems to be where everyone is saying he's going to go. And of course, Auburn already has Bo Nix, who was a five-star who started as a true freshman and obviously did not move forward as a sophomore. Let's talk about how this actually pertains to um, to LSU. I do not like, of course, that TJ Finley is going to another SEC West school. Um, we talk about this all the time in the channel. So much of who you are as a college football program is who is on your schedule. So much of your ability to get to a college football playoff comes down to who is on your schedule and of course you have to play Auburn every season because they are in the SEC West and of course they are a very difficult opponent to beat they recruit in the top 15 nationally and they have national championships and a program history and all those things and look uh, by the time I even post this video TJ Finley might make it announce it that he's going to Auburn or Florida or anywhere else so obviously, when you lose a recruit or when you lose a transfer, you don't want them to go to another SEC West school or Florida because those schools you have to play every season and uh, those schools obviously every year have a chance to go to the college football playoff as well. Now, so yes, you want TJ Finley to Aub uh, Auburn to transfer to like Texas or USC or even better a school like Maryland, a school that you wouldn't even ever have to even play in the college football playoff if you were to get there. So obviously that does stink. Now, as far as what TJ Finley does next, some of you are huge TJ Finley fans, and I am too. I really wanted him to work out. He obviously started the most games last season. He had two good starts against South Carolina and Arkansas, and we talked about this in our TJ Finley deep dive weeks ago. I'll try my best to link it down below. It's hard to when you're on the road, but we were talking about how TJ Finley in those starts had more time to prepare for those games, okay? He had two and three weeks to prepare for those teams, and in the games that he only had a week to prepare, he wasn't as good, and albeit those three teams were better, uh, or at least better defensively, Auburn, um, Alabama, and Texas A&M, you know, he was... Not that great, even though his supporting cast, most notably his offensive line, uh, you know, wasn't necessarily the best either. So, yes, TJ Finley started as a true freshman, and it was pretty clear to see he wasn't ready to play as a true freshman. He wasn't even expected to play because obviously Miles Brennan got hurt. So, obviously, there's that bit of context. And then you look at Auburn's quarterback room with Bo Nix. Uh, Bo Nix, as a true freshman, had to start. And I think Bo Nix is one of these cases where he was starting as a true freshman quarterback at Auburn, where he was an Auburn legacy, a five-star recruit, and he just wasn't ready himself as a true freshman. And he was so overhyped after his first game. He won versus, versus Justin Herbert, and he had the game-winning touchdown throw in that game. But that had more to do with Oregon's bad coaching with Mario Cristobal. And then 
Bo Nix just had these unrealistic expectations, and he's regressed. Now, as far as Bo Nix is concerned, I do want to include that he was coached by Chad Morris, and Chad Morris, to me, is the worst SEC coach in history. So I am not ready to give up on Bo Nix. Now, I think I saw a quote from PFF or uh, – or his quarterback's coach, I don't remember if it was one of the Palmers, said that he believes Bo Nix will be the number one pick in next year's NFL draft. And that's obviously not going to happen. He had such bad regression in just about every statistic with Seth Williams and Anthony Schwartz and Tank Bigsby and a decent offensive line. So he actually had a decent supporting cast, and uh, he wasn't that great, albeit that was Chad Morris as his offensive coordinator. So here's the thing you should feel as an LSU fan. No matter if Bo Nix is still the quarterback at Auburn or TJ Finley is the starter next season, if he does end up going there, that's a good thing. (laughs) This is not as if Johnny Manziel or or any insert any elite quarterback is transferring. Both Bo Nix and TJ Finley should not scare you as a program. Now, both of them have a lot of tools that could take them to the next level, but neither one of them scare me going into next season, even though Bo Nix, of course, had uh, a decent game against us last season. So, yeah, I wouldn't... I don't even know how this angle looks. I wouldn't worry too much about where TJ Finley's going to go because I do think... He's a year three, year four guy, and he's only going to be year two next season. And I think going there and learning a new offense, that's going to take some time. And I'm not sure how scared I am of Auburn's wide receivers now that they don't have Schwartz and Williams there anymore. So, yeah, it's it's a fascinating case study. Now, I want to speak to my fellow TJ Finley fans, okay? And some of you are diehards, and I know, and I've seen these comments, you've seen them as well in the live stream, people saying, I hope T.J. Finley goes to School X and lights LSU up. I've seen those comments, and I just don't get it. I just don't get it at all. I can understand if you're a family member or a friend of T.J. Finley or if you're T.J. Finley himself. I do wish him a lot of success, but I don't wish him so much success that we want him to prove us wrong and, and light us up and, and him beat us. No. <laughs> I thought we were LSU football fans first. And what happens is we get so emotionally invested in players that, you know, college football's hard. Not everybody succeeds. Not everybody is exceptional when they get to the college level. And I think that that is very important. Is this thing still even recording? Yes. I think that's very important (laughs) because you got into loving LSU football probably because of LSU football. And yes, there are some players you like so much, but you like them because they were playing for LSU. So yes, I I don't get the, I, I hope TJ Finley lights us up. I hope TJ has a ton of success. I wish it was here. As you guys know, I cheer for Louisiana three stars. I cheer for Louisiana walk-ons to have success at LSU because it's a true underdog story. And you know how hard it is to get uh, an offer or an opportunity to play as a three-star at a school like LSU. It's really hard. We've seen tons of Louisiana three stars go elsewhere and, and ball out. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a difficult thing. I understand that we have uh, – my arm's just getting tired because I'm weak. Uh, we, we have players that we love, but sometimes it, it's just not the case. And this is the most important thing. And as always, we save the most important thing for last. If TJ Finley succeeds wherever he may go, so be it. That does not mean he was going to be successful at LSU. And I think fans tend to get this wrong, where they say, goodness gracious, Ohio State made such a horrible mistake picking Dwayne Haskins over Joe Burrow. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> but at the time, Dwayne Haskins had played, and in that season, in 2018, Dwayne Haskins was incredible. And, or, or yeah, it was 2018. Then it wasn't until Joe Burrow's year two at LSU that he actually balled out. So what does that tell you? Yes, Joe Burrow could have had an unbelievable amount of success at Ohio State, but part of his success was the transfer. And we see this a lot with quarterbacks. We've seen so many quarterbacks transfer and go to another place because there is that extra chip on your shoulder. There is that extra bit of motivation uh, where you're told, oh, you're not good enough to start at this school. And, you know, if you were good enough to start, you wouldn't transfer, right? So that th there is something to that. Whenever you transfer, it humbles you, and it makes you work even harder. And you get to learn a new playbook, and your football uh, IQ, your football overall game just gets better with that change. So it's – even if TJ goes and, and wins a Heisman Trophy somewhere else – that doesn't mean that that was going to be T.J. Finley at LSU. And I think that, you know, with Justin Fields, who was just so incredible at Ohio State, would he have been that good without that chip on his shoulder from uh, Kirby Smart and leaving Georgia and uh, Kyler Murray leaving A&M and Baker Mayfield? There's something to be said about the transfer that makes you better. So, you know, I... I I get so many TJ Finley messages saying, God, I think we're making a mistake and Max and Miles aren't all that great. And, you know, there's some truth to that. Max and Miles aren't these, you know, they're, they're, they're very good. Um, they were, you know, way ahead of TJ, but they're not obviously can't miss guys. So, yeah, I, I understand. I get a lot of questions about Carter. I don't think Max and Miles are really that, that great. I'm a little worried about the quarterback and all that. What about Garrett Nussmeyer and all those things? Understand, quarterbacks take time. It, it takes development. And a lot of this just comes down to luck. Some guys just pop. Sometimes things just click. Sometimes you just learn uh, <laughs> new traits and abilities that you didn't have from the year before. So, you know, I, I wish T.J. Finley nothing but the best no matter, no matter where he ends up. And probably by the time I even post this video today, I, I, I just know it. I just know it the day that I'm traveling, a big LSU or whatever story is going to break. So, I know it's wide receivers week. We will get back to wide receiver content. I should be back uh, in my studio late tonight, and then we'll crank out another video for tomorrow, okay? Uh, I love hanging out with you guys on the road. I'm glad you got to uh, hang out in beautiful New Roads, Louisiana. It is Power Hour LSU Bob! Let's see, I've had chicken wings. Like, I was in Baton Rouge, had chicken wings, and I think tonight uh, we're doing salmon. Let's go!